This is EBC Sports International. This week's stories. Lance Armstrong declines invitation to tour of Flanders in Belgium. ATP New York Open debuts at Nassau Coliseum. News across North America in soccer and tennis. Great inflatable race in Tampa, Florida. News around NBA, plus Villanova Wildcats win Big East tournament title. This is EBC Sports International. I'm Rod De La Paz bringing you news in sports from around the globe. We begin with cycling. Once known as one of the world's most admirable athletes, Lance Armstrong's image tarnished after admitted to doping allegations during his years of competition. Armstrong was stripped off of his record-breaking seven Tour de France titles. Sales of his iconic yellow lid strong wristbands diminished. Nike cut ties with his cancer foundation, which he later sold and is banned for life from the sport. Since coming clean with the allegations, the disgraced U.S. cyclist and cancer survivor was invited to participate in Sunday's Tour of Flanders in Belgium. The invitation was given as a sign of forgiveness to bring the 46-year-old back into cycling but declined due to family matters. Armstrong said on social media that he will follow the historic event from his home in Texas and thanked Belgian race organizer Wouter Vandenhout for the opportunity. The invitation irked International Cycling Union President David Lapartient, stating that he would boycott the event if Armstrong participated. The Tour of Flanders is one of Belgium's most popular one-day cycling events, with cyclists racing along long cobblestones and deep, steep hills. The only indoor tennis event in the U.S., ATP New York Open debuted at Nassau Coliseum out in Long Island. EBC New York correspondent Jennifer Paulenten reports. Hi everyone, we're coming to you from Long Island, New York, where the New York Open Tennis Tournament kicks off this week, featuring greats and legends from all around the world and even up-and-coming stars. So join us as we watch them tonight to battle it out for this world tournament. The New York Open is one of 10 men's professional tennis tournaments held in the United States and the only one held indoors. This year, it was held at NYCB Live, home of the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum, and this year, it debuts its first ever blacktop courts. 28 professional athletes will compete for the coveted $700,000 prize. Up-and-coming stars, as well as longtime champions, will showcase their skills this week. And to add to the excitement, doubles matches will also be in play. The tournament opened with an exhibition game between James Blake and legend John McEnroe. To see that, I think that makes the game more interesting as well as an American interest, as well as people sort of, the example, the Labor Cup, I think was successful because it was a team thing that really, you know, like a Ryder Cup that people bought into. I do think a servant value could do it. You have to sort of take advantage, for example, <laughs> of the smaller courts that kids use, the under 10, and then so that they feel uh, more inclined to be able to utilize those type of skills that you need to learn. Another exhibition match featured Sloane Stevens and doubles partner Jeannie Bouchard. Last year, today I was on crutches, couldn't leave my house. Um, I was non-weight bearing for 16 weeks, so I wasn't walking around, I wasn't doing anything. I was just kind of being a bomb at home, which was not the funnest thing, but, um, you know, never in a million years did I think, oh, you know, eight months old, six months old, when I was open. I just kind of, I think now I've adjusted well, and is that I'm happy to be competing again, excited to be back on court, so I think that's all that really, really matters. The week concluded with a championship match between Kevin Anderson, ranked eighth in the world, defeating rival Sam Query, ranked 11. Wow, what an exciting night of tennis. From watching the greats and tennis icons to meeting up and coming new and rising stars, it has been certainly quite a night. For Eagle News, I am Jennifer Polentan and I am one with 25. Thanks, Jennifer. Up next, news in soccer and tennis across North America and the great inflatable race in Tampa, Florida. We will be right back. Welcome 
welcome back. This is EBC Sports International. Now for more news across North America. On Saturday, Zlatan Ibrahimovic made his MLS debut for the Los Angeles Galaxy against city rivals Los Angeles FC. Ibrahimovic had an impressive game, scoring two goals, including the game winner as the Galaxy came back from a 3-0 deficit to beat LAFC 4-3 at the StubHub Center. The 36-year-old Swedish striker entered the game in the 71st minute with fans chanting, We want Zlatan! We want Zlatan! And the superstar did not disappoint the home crowd. Ibrahimovic spoke to the media after the match regarding his debut and the comeback victory. I felt I played 40 games for my 20 minutes. I was feeling everything, jet lag, didn't play for a long time. I did the first sprint and I was like started, starting to breathe immediately. So when the second came, I said, this time I shoot. I don't run with the ball. And that's the ball that went in. I said I was saved. Because when you lose 3-0, the adrenaline is pumping even more because you want to you wanna be, be able to do something, help the team, help, especially when, it's, when they're in a difficult situation. And I just wanted to come in and then the fans were demanding something, and and I gave them Zlatan. <laughs> Difficult to describe. I was getting the how do you say the the chicken skin, the bumps when, uh, yeah, boost bumps. Good. And uh, from the third goal we scored, and then for the fourth was even more crazy because you're winning the game. But after that, I was like, just stop the game now. It's enough. <laughs> I don't want to feel any more adrenaline. It's not easy because I can imagine LAFC now winning 3-0, losing 4-3. It's not easy. But if they would have Zlatan, it would be opposite. <laughs> Moving from the soccer field to the tennis courts, Rafael Nadal is set to return to competition as Spain takes on Germany in the Davis Cup quarterfinals April 6 to 8. The 16-time Grand Slam champion has been sidelined with a right leg injury suffered in his Australian Open quarterfinal match against runner-up Marine Cilic in January. Nadal's last Davis Cup appearance with the Spanish team was back in September 2016. Nadal will retain the number one ranking this week, which was previously held by rival Roger Federer since February. Known as the fifth Grand Slam, the Miami Open is the ATP and WTA's most prestigious tennis tournament outside of the four majors, the Australian Open, French Open, Wimbledon, and the US Open. This year, the tournament crowned two first-time winners. 2017 US Open women's champion Sloane Stephens crushed fifth-seeded Yelena Ostapenko of Latvia 7-6, 6-1 to claim the women's title on Saturday. American John Isner and Germany's Alexander Zverev battled for the men's title on Sunday and it was Isner who came up on top with a 6-7, 6-4, 6-4 thrilling victory for his first Masters Series title. Ready to have some fun on a 5K inflatable obstacle course? Here's EBC correspondent Jay Reskitas trekking through the great inflatable race in Tampa, Florida. Hey everyone, it's Jay. We're here at the Florida State Fairgrounds in Tampa, Florida about to show you the fun side to a 5K. So what's the new fuss about all these new fun runs? Well, today we're going to experience what it's like to run the great inflatable race. Claiming to be the first and original all-inflatable run, the Great Inflatable Race empowers people to come together in a positive social change. Established in 2012, this traveling race can be found in over 80 U.S. cities. Even though the skies were filled with heavy and dark clouds, hundreds of people still gathered here at the Tampa location from all ages and all walks of life to run this 5K. from climbing, 
to jumping, to falling, and sliding, this 5k definitely gave these participants an exhilarating rush in this fun-filled inflatable obstacle course run. The bounciest fun on earth. Yeah, that's how we promote it. It's, it's all ages. Sometimes this really tiny ones, they have to um, get carried on some of them or they just walk around, but really anybody can do them. Anybody of all ages. This is, this is a good, I would say like a good start for somebody who wants to go in like in the right direction as far as like getting up and you know, getting active, moving around. I mean, this race right here says it all. I mean, there's different obstacle courses. And then after a while, I mean, you can go ahead and just start jogging too. So there's there's stretches where you can actually run and, you know, try to keep pace with yourself. So uh, for everyone who's out there who wants to get involved with something, man, this is it right here. The great inflatable race encourages all types of runners, whether they are experienced or coming to run for the first time. It also promotes good health, a good family atmosphere, and goes by one motto, having fun. It was great. We had a great time. It was fun. I do it with my daughter every year. All you need is a little confidence and you can do it. It's been very nice. This is great. Uh, it's kind of a good moment, you know, to spend with the family, with everybody else, with the friends. Uh, you have fun here. I really recommend it. Yeah, no question. I know that I think, I think every year they do this. So, yeah, I'll try to come every year. Um, we got a group together to run this, this awesome race. And it looks like we had the biggest group, right? Because it's fun! It's so much fun! And we love to have fun while getting fit and taking care of ourselves, too. So, if you ever wanted to try out one of these fun runs, go and check out the Great Inflatable Race at your nearest location. I definitely enjoyed it. Reporting with the EBC Florida Bureau, I am Jay Rosquitas, Always won with 25. Thanks, Jay. Coming up, news around the NBA and Villanova Wildcats win Big East tournament title. That's next. EBC Sports International will return in a moment. We're back. This is EBC Sports International. I'm Rod De La Paz. We continue with news around the NBA. Los Angeles Lakers point guard Isaiah Thomas will undergo hip rehab and will not play for the remainder of the season. The 28-year-old two-time All-Star was acquired from the Cleveland Cavaliers during the league's trade deadline last February 8th. Thomas injured his hip last year with the Boston Celtics, but has been bothered with lingering issues. The Lakers are expected to try and attract free agents such as LeBron James and Paul George to Los Angeles, while Thomas might be doubtful to return. Philadelphia 76ers center Joel Embiid will be out two to four weeks after successful eye surgery. Embiid was injured when he clashed with fellow teammate Markel Fultz during a game with the New York Knicks. The 76ers said there is no timetable for his recovery and he will return when he is medically cleared. Golden State Warriors forward Kevin Durant returned to the lineup last Thursday against the Milwaukee Bucks. Durant's return lasted briefly as he was ejected in the second quarter after he continued arguing with the official. John Wall returned from knee surgery on Saturday as the Wizards defeated the Hornets 107-93. Wall scored 15 points and dished 14 assists in the win as the Wizards clinched a playoff spot. And that's all for NBA news. Finally, we'll end with NCAA college basketball. March Madness brought epic upsets and grueling battles between the best Division I schools in America. For the Villanova Wildcats, their journey to this year's NCAA championship at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, began by winning their fourth Big East Conference title led by National Player of the Year, Jalen Brunson. With more on the Wildcats' overtime victory against the Providence Friars, 
Here's ABC New York correspondent, Tenny Sumagi reporting from the world's greatest sporting arena. Nova Nation dominates once again here at the Garden as the Villanova Wildcats win a thrilling overtime victory against the Providence Friars. Let's check out some highlights. It was a classic traditional Big East basketball conference title matchup between the defending champions Villanova Wildcats and the divine Providence Friars. For the fourth time in history, the conference title game went into overtime, and it was the Wildcats that prevailed to a thrilling 76-66 victory over the Friars. Villanova won their fourth Big East title in nine trips to the finals. Jalen Brunson tied a career-best 31 points, and Nicole Bridges added 25 points as the Wildcats were guaranteed a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Former Villanova player and NBA All-Star point guard Kyle Lowry of the Toronto Raptors showed his support at the game and congratulated the players for their win. Thank you, Tenny. That is this week's EBC Sports International. Join us again next time as we bring you sports news from around the globe. I'm Rod De La Paz, always one with 25.